And tonight's little talk is about f feminine images of God, and we're going to do a Visio Divina. So let's begin with a psalm. We'll chant a psalm antiphonally. In the shadow of your wings, I rejoice, Alleluia. In the shadow of your wings, I rejoice, Alleluia. O oh God, my God, at dawn I seek you, for you my soul is thirsting. My flesh is longing, like a dry and parched land longs for water. In the shadow of your wings I rejoice, Alleluia. I have gazed on you in the holy place, to behold your power and your glory. Better than life itself is your love. My lips will sing your praise. In the shadow of your wings I rejoice, Alleluia. I rejoice in the shadow of your wings. To you my soul has held fast. Just use the up arrow to go back up to the previous slides. Well, we'll just close with one more. In the shadow of your wings, I rejoice, Alleluia. Welcome to this digital contemplative prayer group. This is a place for all God's people. Whatever your beliefs or doubts, you are welcome here. If you are new to Centering Prayer, just follow the instructions as the session unfolds. You are also welcome to use the silence in any other way that is right for you. Loving God, we ask for your blessings upon this gathering recognizing that we bring the joys and sorrows of our lives here today. If anyone would like to mention silently or aloud expressions of gratitude or concern for ourselves, our families, our friends, our society, or our fragile planet, please do so now. Prayers for Dana's father. For Marge. For Reed and Thompson. Prayers for my son-in-law, Joe, and my two grandchildren, Addison and Oakland, who have COVID. Prayers for Arlene. God, we trust that you hear our prayers, silent or spoken, wordless or in words. I was raised with male pronouns for God at a time when such language constructs were rarely, if ever, questioned. But when I entered, entered seminary in my 40s, I became more familiar with the 
idea that God was beyond gender or perhaps even has female traits. But at first such ideas made me really uncomfortable as if there was no place inside me to put an image of a female God. Around that same time, I started traveling regularly to India to study Hinduism, including three trips with Hindu monks who took me to extraordinary worship services in the temples there. I learned that Hindus believe in one God, even though God is portrayed in many forms. And I began to realize that Hindu images of God might not be as different from Christian images as they had seemed to me at first. God certainly appears in many strange forms in Judeo-Christian scripture, and the incredibly varied images of God in the Old Testament reminded me an awful lot of the Hindu gods. A burning bush, a still small voice, a liberator, a military commander, king, a lawgiver, a bestower of plagues and hardness of heart, a destroyer god who kills all of humankind except for Noah and his family. In addition, Hebrew scripture uses a lot of female metaphors to suggest that God can be seen as a woman in labor, a mother tenderly holding us to her breast or a mother bird sheltering her young under her wings. In the Christian mystical tradition, Julian of Norwich calls God our mother, and Brother Lawrence describes the breasts of God. The Hindu worship services I attended in India sometimes lasted many hours with chanting and incense and burning of smoke, spices and smoke filling the, the air. A statue of God in the image of a column, as a man with the head of an elephant, or as a woman would be honored during the worship ceremonies by being bathed first in milk, then in honey, in rose water, in holy ash, and as the different substances poured down in turn over the stone sculpture, I would feel as if I was being cleansed more and more deeply. Then they'd draw a curtain across the image, and we'd sit and wait for a long time while behind the curtain, the image of the deity was being prepared for viewing with beautiful makeup, garlands of flowers, and sometimes silver armor. Suddenly, the curtain would be pulled back with a dramatic flourish, and the extraordinarily transformed image of God would somehow pierce my heart as if I was being opened at some new level. The Hindu images of a female God in particular moved me. I had been told in the Christian tradition that I was created in the image of God, but where was the evidence of this in art and in churches? Without realizing it, I had started to crave images of a female God who looked more like me. In India, a strange land, God came to me in these female images to reassure me that I am indeed created in God's image. Whenever possible, I avoid using male pronouns for God, even if it means using inelegant, awkward constructions. I use constructions like repeating the word God, every place that God is mentioned, God's and God's self, to avoid he, him, and himself. Usually I try to avoid Lexio readings that use male pronouns or I adapt them with more inclusive gender neutral language. I appreciate that others may not be willing to go to so much trouble, but to me it has become very important 
that God not be mentioned as male. If you imagine God as feminine, does that help God's love to flow towards you? Is there something about the idea of a feminine God that opens you to God's love? I believe that God is ready to do whatever it takes to help us feel that we are loved. Feel and taste God's love in whatever form it is coming to you in this moment. Let's close with a passage from Psalm 131 in which the soul sleeps in its mother's arms. My mind is not noisy with desires, God, and my heart has satisfied its longing. I have soothed and quieted my soul like a child at its mother's breast. My soul is as peaceful as a child sleeping in its mother's arms. So now let's turn to our 20 minute period of centering prayer. I invite you to take your posture, sitting with your back straight, and letting your body flow out from your spine, relaxed, natural, comfortable, alert, but not rigid. And just notice how it feels to be in your body. Is there anything you'd like to adjust before we begin? Any place that needs a little wiggle or a shake? Or that you'd like to gently touch with your attention? Any place you'd like to breathe deeply into? And just notice how it feels to be in the room where you are in this moment of time as part of this digital community connected through space and time with others in different places and even others who might be watching this on the recording at some later time. We are connected through the energy of the prayer And I invite you to take a moment to notice who God is for you right now, whatever that might mean. What will allow God to come to you in the most loving and simple way right now? Just touch that with your attention. Make a commitment to be open and present to God during the prayer and then let go of any ideas of God for the silent time of the prayer. And if you'd like, you can gently sound your sacred word like a little bell calling you to prayer or ever so gently touch your sacred breath with your attention. Just reminding yourself that your sacred symbol is there if you need it. Whenever you become engaged with your thoughts, distracted by them, tangled up in them, you can silently, gently touch your sacred symbol to reorient yourself. Loving God, help us to receive and rest in your love.
Visio Divina is a form of divine seeing in which we prayerfully invite God to speak to our hearts as we look at an image. As we gaze together in an image, I will offer you some questions for silent reflection, some of which may speak to you, while others you might choose to ignore. At the end of the Visio Divina, I'll invite you to share a word or phrase to express your experience of the image. As you gaze at the image, notice your breath and your body. Simply be present to the image and allow it to speak to your heart without any particular agenda. It might speak to you in words or wordlessly. How do you feel looking at the image? If you had to describe the image in a sentence or two, what would you say? If you were in the image, where would you place yourself? Do you get a glimpse of the sacred from this image? Is God speaking to you in this image? Does a name for God arise for you from this image?
In silence, sit with what you have received. If you choose, share aloud a word or phrase to express your experience of the image. Bountiful nourishment. Abundance. Fertility. Taste and see that God is good. Let's close by saying together the night prayer. Lord, it is night. The night is for stillness. Let us be still in the presence of God. It is night after a long day. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. The night is dark. Let our fears of the darkness of the world and of our own lives rest in you. The night is quiet. Let the quietness of your peace enfold us, all dear to us and all who have no peace. The night heralds the dawn. Let us look expectantly to a new day, new joys, new possibilities. In your name we pray, amen. Thanks for being here tonight. It was wonderful to be with you. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Lindsay. Be blessed, everyone. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Lindsay.